Do I need to smile? <laughs> what did somebody say when they're up here? Can you get the best side? <laughs> I know it's tough, isn't it? Well, once again, good morning. It's nice to be here. <laughs> um, I'm going to tell you just two minutes of the saga, just in case you're wondering why I'm here. Um, uh, it must be nearly three weeks ago, at least maybe a month ago. Um, I know I'm speaking on the 28th of August, but about a month ago, I was just saying to the Lord, you know, I'm going to have to think... Uh, in a couple of weeks' time, about speaking in August, and I got out. I was in bed, and I got out of bed, and and this word just dropped straight into my head: emptiness. And I said to the Lord, as you do, you know, well, I don't want it now, you know. Just hang on. I've got weeks. Don't need it now, Lord. But you know, and some of you will relate to this. Depends how the Lord speaks to you. He just would not let it go. You know, I'd got my head stuffed in the washing machine, push, pushing the washing in, and it's emptiness and everything. Anyway, I wrote it all down, and the weeks went past. And then on Monday, I uh, had spoken to Steve and asked him if he would let me have the word for today and the music if he wanted any. Yes, he said, and we went through a whole thing about it all, and... Just as I'm about, I'm saying to him, cheerio, Steve, look forward to seeing you on Sunday. He said to me, I'm just going to tell you, Sandy, my wife's tested positive for COVID this morning. Now, those who know me well will know that it's not very often I'm dumbstruck and lost for words. And I was just for about two seconds. Oh, oh, okay, Steve. Well, you know, let me know when you know, when, you know, if everything's all right, and da, da 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 and he said, yeah, I'll ring you if I'm not. And the next, you know, and I put the phone down, and I thought, Jenny, Jenny, <laughs> I've got to get, you know, contingency plan, and, and there, right in front of me nose, was all my writing. And I thought, oh, Lord, you're so good. You, you've, you've, you've in front, you're in front of us, you've worked it out. Because he rang up the next day and said, yes, I've got COVID. So that's why I'm here. Sorry, a bit of a saga. Well, first of all, I want to say, Sue, thank you. I want to say thank you for being obedient when, you know, what you'd said make me, did you say make me brave? Make... Sorry, give me difficult, help me do difficult, yeah. And, and just thank you that you listened and you did. And thank you for all those lovely ones that have prayed. We sure can pray in this fellowship. We really can. So emptiness. Now this word I know is not going to be for everybody. I know that. But I do know that it is going to be for somebody. So you may have heard that people, you know, people say we need to be filled every day with the Holy Spirit because we continually leak. We continually leak. And we do, don't we? We can, have, we can live a very full life, yet sometimes we feel empty, distant from God, Jesus, our Saviour. And we think, you know, how can this happen? Well, very easily, really, considering the busyness around us. The busyness we create ourselves, life is full of the words, there's two words actually, both of them in context are fine, but mostly they're used out of context. Must. You must have. You must do. You must give to others. Must, must, must. Or that other word that can be nasty and powerful. Should. I should do that. That's the word that always brings condemnation and guilt and lack of self-worth. I should have done that. If only I'd done that. Oh, I'm useless. Now, I may have said this before. I will say it again. Anyone who stands up here has to speak 
I can guarantee that they've spent time with the Lord asking what he wants to be said. It means everything to me to get it right for you to hear what God is saying. And um, I believe I can say this morning, someone really relates to what I've already said. I've already said, I really believe that someone here needs to hear this morning from God these words, it's okay, it's all right. Our Lord is not condemning you and he's not making you feel guilty. He knows you've been busy. He knows you've been too busy, too busy to hear him, to spend time with him. He knows you have worn yourself out, giving to others in different ways. He's not going to beat you with a stick, so please stop beating yourself. And that's me too. I'm speaking to me as well. And so there is this great emptiness inside. And I'm pretty sure this morning that somewhere down the line we've all felt that way at some time. What's happened to me? Where is God? And then, you know, somehow you can be anywhere the light goes on. It could be a piece of music. It could be somebody speaking to you, somebody trying to say something to you that they've probably tried to say a thousand times and it's gone in one ear and out the other. Sometimes it's what June says up here. And all of a sudden, you just don't want to feel empty anymore, any longer. And we just crumble. Sometimes the tears flow and repentance begins. Sorry, Lord, I've been too busy, forgive me. Too busy, taken up with stuff. Help me to just lay it all down before your cross. And as we do that, we know what it is to be forgiven in love, his love. To know the power of his peace the weight just lifted off our shoulders and that little voice bringing condemnation and guilt, lifting it off us and just giving us that silence and that presence, that knowing you are loved beyond all understanding. And then comes the hard bit, the looking and listening to what he says or who he uses to say things to that we don't always like because he knows that we'll get in this place again he knows that and it's like a battle begins in the flesh what we deem important is not necessarily what he deems important for us to be involved in. And it's hard to let go of situations, people and doing because we can see a need. And by Jove, we can fill that need. You know, we go in there, don't we? Well, I do sometimes. I shouldn't say, that. I shouldn't say we all do. And I'm glad to say, if only we would get out of the way, physically and spiritually, the Lord could get involved. Sometimes we see a need and we are in there asking and praying, please do something, Lord, in these situations. And I can just imagine the Lord saying, and he has said this to me a few times. I would love to. Just put it in my hands. Not you this time. 
take a rest. I've got somebody else in mind. But we don't always give him chance to put that someone else in that place, in that need. And we, if we are not in the place he wants us to be, we will end up getting too busy, empty, and worn out. The word indispensable means absolutely necessary. The word dispensable means capable of, of being dispen dispensed with, done without, not necessary, or essential. Who wants to feel like that? Well, none of us, of course. And that it is, that's why it's so important to listen to the Lord and not rely on feelings and what other people say. It is very hurtful sometimes. Your trouble is, you think you're indispensable. Nobody wants to be spoken to like that. But Jesus says, it's time to let go and let God. Let me do this job for you. This is what he says in Matthew 28. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle, meek, and humble and lowly in heart, and you will find rest, relief and ease and refreshment and recreation and blessed quiet for your souls. For my yoke is wholesome, useful, good, not harsh, hard, sharp or pressing, but comfortable, gracious and pleasant. And my burden is light and easy to be born. This, this is what the Lord says to us in these situations. He covers everything in these verses. To lean on him, he's gentle. He won't judge you, make you feel bad about yourself. And how many of us at some time have felt that way, experienced that? Rest and relief and ease and refreshment and recreation. Blessed quiet for our souls. Who doesn't want all these blessings in life and encouraging words? He then goes on to tell us about himself. My yoke, my way is useful, good not harsh or hard, sharp or pressing. He tells us, I am comfortable and gracious and pleasant, and the burdens are light and easy to be borne when we listen to him. That's one feeling of emptiness that the Lord covers and helps us to get through if we listen. There are other times when we feel empty, an emptiness nothing to do with what I've just been saying. Sometimes we say, I just feel an emptiness. I don't know why. I don't know why I don't feel close to the Lord. I don't really understand. I read my Bible, I pray, I worship. And of course, the enemy comes along. How Peter, in, in 1 Peter 5, describes him. That enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a roaring lion, someone seeking someone to seize upon and devour. We, we, we all need to read that, that through those verses. I'm sure you've watched these David Attenborough programs of a lion working and prowling and looking 
for a weakness in his prey on the TV. We are vulnerable in these times and we can start feeling guilty. What have I done? Why do I feel like this? We just need to sit down, put on the armor of God in Ephesians 6 and quietly remember our Lord's promises to us. I will never, never forsake you. Nothing, nothing can separate us from his love. Don't rely on feelings, but on my word, he says. Sometimes the Lord just wants to spend time with us, and testing times come to help us grow in faith. When you're doing something, when you're doing everything as you think is right, he hasn't gone away, he hasn't gone anywhere. His spirit lives in us, in you and me. He just wants us to trust him, not rely on our feelings, but on his word. To praise him even when you don't feel him near, just because you love him and trust his word. It's a faith growing time in these times. If that's how you feel this morning, whether you feel an emptiness because you've been too busy, Jesus loves you and wants to, excuse me, to show another way to trust him. If you feel an emptiness when you feel you've been faithful, trust him. Trust him. He gave his all for you and me. He'll bring you through this time, this time of wilderness as we call it. He'll bring you through in his time. (coughs) Excuse me. My heart's desire is to see us grow in the Lord together here in SBC. For some, it will be a brand new beginning on the walk with the Lord. But whatever I want, it's nothing compared with what the Lord wants to do here and with each one of us. Amen. Lord, I have said and felt, uh, felt and said what you wanted and the rest is up to you. Just bless your word, Lord.